The key difference between envelopes and templates is that an envelope is a one-time transaction, while a template is a blueprint for repeatable envelopes. Templates help simplify the sending process when you frequently send the same or similar documents to different people or send different documents to the same people or role. Creating a template is similar to setting up an envelope and templates include documents, recipient roles and actions, an email subject and message, and fields. Benefits of using templates to automate workflows. Templates can speed up your envelope creation process by leveraging the same components of an envelope that you use over and over again. Reduce the risk of errors, such as missing recipients or misplaced fields. Create a consistent sending experience by sharing templates with other users on your account. You may or may not have access to templates on your account. Your account administrator will determine this via template permission settings, where you can have one of the following, which is none, no access to templates, use, where you can use templates created and shared by others, create, where you can create and use templates, and share, where you can create, use, and share templates. You can either use a template or apply a template. Today, we'll be focusing on using templates, but I want to quickly mention the apply option as well, as you may use it at a later time. Use. When you create a template that includes a specific document, you can use the template repeatedly without the document changing. In the example shown here, an NDA is being sent to three different signers via three different envelopes. The information being requested in the document, such as a signature, name, and date that is requested from each person who receives an envelope. The document doesn't change. It stays the same in each envelope sent. Apply. Applying a template is different as it typically involves a document that must be changed, edited, customized before it is uploaded to an envelope and sent. The template you apply still has predefined recipients, messages, and fields in a preset workflow. These predefined recipient messages and fields are carried into the document you upload, which saves you a lot of time. An example might be a purchase order that must be edited before sending to include product and pricing information for items being purchased. Template recipient roles are another difference between creating single use envelopes and templates. In most instances, you will use a placeholder role, which is used when the recipient names and contact information will be different for each envelope. Note that the name field is blank. So when you send the template, you will fill in the actual recipient's information for that role. You can also use named recipients. When the recipient name and contact information will be the same each time the template is sent. For example, if agreements are always sent to the same person as part of a workflow, for example, for archiving, that person can be added to the template as a named recipient, and then they receive a copy action. Think about Holly and HR when I sent an envelope. This will speed up the process and ensure that the sender does not make mistakes or forget to add this person into the workflow. You can customize the, the email subject line by clicking the merge field icon at the end of the line and selecting from the options available. This will make each envelope sent from the template unique so that they don't all look the same on your manage page. This will help if you're sending a large number of envelopes from this template and will need to search for specific emails later. The email message will be seen by all recipients unless you check the checkbox 
for a custom email and language for each recipient. If that box is checked, you can set up a custom email message for specific recipients and a variety of languages. So let's see how to create a template and to use a template. Let me log back into DocuSign and I'm gonna go to my templates tab. So in this scenario, department admins initiate a credit card request form for employees who need a company credit card. The form is routed first to the manager for approval and then to finance for completion. They'd like a template created so they don't have to add the fields each time, all right? So in the essence of saving time, I already have a credit card request form example to show you. So I'm just gonna go into edit and we'll talk about how it was created. So when you need to create a template, the first thing that you do is that you give it a template name. And then the next step is that you can create a description, but that is optional. Then you will, just like when we send an envelope, we can load in our document either by uploading or dragging and dropping onto the template creation page. And just to double check, same functionality comes into play. I can look and see, hey, I brought over the right document. If it was the wrong one, I could hit my vertical ellipsis and you see I have replaced right here. So then I can change the document if need be. Now, as I scroll down, we want to set the signing order for this in particular because we know it has to go to the approver first and then to someone in finance. So as you can see, the difference between and sending an envelope, when we send an envelope, we enter in the individual's name information. But for templates, we don't necessarily know who that is. So that's why we create these roles here, just for that reason. And you see, we have a needs to sign status and needs to sign status as well. Then I can scroll down to the message. Please DocuSign credit card request form from and then it is a merge field for approver's username. And we can select our merge field by coming over here to this box with an arrow and see the drop down. So as you can see, it is approver's name and email address as well as, well as finance name and finance's email address. This is driven off of our recipients, our number of recipients. So if we had a third recipient on here, then there will be another two, third recipient's name and third recipient's email address. So that's what drives this listing as we look at it. Then we also have our email message. Please process at your earliest convenience. Thanks. This is optional, of course. And same stuff when I go up to advanced options, I can set reminders and expiration. Now, in this example, as you can see how it's grayed out, the creator of this template set this up so that the sender cannot change the reminder. So that is why it is grayed out. So next thing that I can do is select next and it will take me to the document. So now here's an idea so you can see how the fields that come into play. If I click on the field right here, again, my right-hand panel opens up and you'll notice I have required field and it is checked. So I wanted to just uncheck just to, so you can see the difference between a required field and an unrequired field, all right? But I wanna keep it as required, so I'll let that go. And now you see our radio buttons for our credit limit, so I can click on any one of those. So I'm gonna highlight the fields and you notice we have group labels in which we name and radio button values. And we put in the values for our radio buttons. Then we can scroll down, you can see our proper signatures approved by the right fields are in play and the finance department, but you notice this is a text field because credit card number Again, we're not going to know right away. It's not going to be something we can pre-populate. It has to be entered in. So we use a text field. So that way the recipient can type in the information or credit card number. 
You can also add in validation. So if I wanted to say, I want to make sure that these are numbers going in that field, we can say a validation of numbers. So if anybody made a mistake and put in a letter and didn't realize it, they would not be able to move forward. There'd be a red box and an error message stating, hey, this is not a properly formatted field. Please correct. Okay, so that's what you can do sometimes. You can add in validations with these fields. Now with everything in play, all I need to do now is select save and close. And the template is ready for use. So if I wanna send this template, there are a few ways in which I can send it. I have to send it from my home tab. Hit my start drop down. use a template. I can do it from my manage page. Under my manage page, select the new drop down, use a template. And then from my templates page, I can click on the link to the actual template to go into what we call the detail screen. And from here, I can select use. And lastly, from our templates page, there is a use right here. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna add in use and it goes into our quick send view where all I need to do is enter in the name of my recipient, check the form to make sure it looks right, and then go ahead and hit send. That's the purpose of templates, to be able to enter in the information quickly and get it out quickly. It's a way of saving time for our account users. So I'm gonna add in some names here. Wrong one, we'll go with this one. Apply selected, and then another name here. Barclay, apply selected, and then the message is fine. Email message, the subject, they both look good to me. The form looks like it's about to be the right form. So all that's left for me to do is select send, and then it's now off to the races. Okay? So that is how you can create a template as well as use a template. 